Oh, let's talk, uh, let's talk, you know, 80s disco tech action. You spin me right Upside round, down. baby, right that round? round. That's not the same tune. Upside no. down, boy, you turn me. That's a, uh, boy, you turn Inside me. out. That, that's round a different round. song. No, that's a, that's a totally different song. Totally, totally different, different song. era. I brought you an 80s, dead or alive, and you went back to the 70s, early 80s. I don't even <laughs> well, know I'm a couple years older than you, so I get to sure. do that. And, you know, you're a little Mark slow. and Vitals, it's our show. We are, uh, we are streaming it, and uh, we brought it in with uh, Bring Out Your Dead um, because they're still counting votes, uh, and some of them dead people, uh, for sure. <laughs> now, I've, I've heard that that never happens, but uh, hailing from Chicago, I know that it does. Uh, we need the cemetery roll, please. How about Chicago and Illinois? Uh, a huge shakeup now there as Pritzker, the governor, has uh, asked or told Madigan, the Democratic uh, chair and longtime power broker in, uh, you want to talk about a swamp, never, never more. <laughs> you know, Chicago actually means stinky swamp in yeah. uh, the native but Indian language. There's a reason why they have to dye the river green. <laughs> One of my favorite days to be in Chicago, by the There's way. There's a reason why. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's talk. Let's get it out of the way. A, a, a brief uh, news clip on uh, on the current status of the election. Matt, take it away. Now go ahead. You've got the uh, you've got the updated real policy. Actually, I don't. I don't. <laughs> okay. So then we'll move right through it. Bring out your dead. If you if if some of you younger viewers have yet to watch in your lifetime. Monty Python's The Holy Grail. I did bring the segment in with the, with the audio okay. of Bring Out Your Dead. But I'm not you, I'm dead not, yet. I'm not dead yet. But if you have not seen this great classic movie this weekend, since it's chilling off, you're getting colder out there. I haven't watched a ton of Netflix, Hulu, et cetera, during the shutdown. But by all means, those of you who have wa expired all your new edition shows, watch Holy Grail if you've never seen it. It's it is so great. Best. It's one of the best. And then, and then, if, and then, if you like that enough, go go on to the meaning of life. Right on. Because you can get both ends of the spectrum with that. You know, politically. Speaking of uh, the change, Matt, let just let's quickly. Yep. Live summit view of Mount Bachelor. There's no chairs on, yet on the on the uh, on the. No pole. chairs on the well, summit lift yet. Yet. But uh, the times, they are changing, right? We are going to head in fully into winter here. Um, hopefully, maybe enough snow up there. I can uh, try my hand at skinning up, earning my turns, yeah, you, as we well, call you, you it You better here. bring your rock skis right now if you're even thinking about it. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I ain't skiing in that kind of coverage. <laughs> anyway, enough of the, uh, the, the small talking. Um, let's talk markets, Matt. And uh, you can lead it off. Um, Lots of people or lots of uh, lots of stocks making all time new highs, correct? Yeah, we talked. I talked a little bit about it this morning, but I won't go into it. But uh, there's a number of names TTD, Roku, Square all made new highs this morning, along with Fiverr. And uh, that was a stock we were fading uh, a couple weeks ago to the short side, and now it has recovered. And made a new high so that come off and then right back to a new high probably back to a new short again <laughs> but again these are all time highs for those stocks that i just mentioned square etc and then uh, i talked a little bit this morning i want to kind of transition into you know now every you know the the funny mentals bob uh we're kind of going into the christmas silly season and you'll get runs and whatever the hottest you know trends are in stocks and peloton has obviously been one of those and it has recovered after a significant 30% sell-off. It went from 140 down here to about uh, 108, 109. And it came right back to what we talked about. If you wanted to look to re-enter a sell, 132 would have been the area and it's already given you seven bucks today. So if you're paying attention to what we're talking about here daily, Bob, we provide not only actionable ideas, but risk associated with those actionable ideas. And we said, hey, sell 132 up to the old high, and most likely you're going to come back. Today alone was worth the price of admission, 132 down to 125 today as we come back to the point of control 
right there, 132. Uh, no, I just I just love the the, uh, the script, um, this profile script because just like for me in the standard deviation modeling, every time frame tells a little bit different story, right? And you get to build an if then statement around those time frames, and it's so important. Um, it's also dangerous when you start building a, a trade around if then statements and then changing the the if then because you're looking at a different time frame. Right. Again, I, the, thing, I the, thing about, the thing about this trade, Bob, is is it came literally like all you had to do is right. put an order in at 132. You would have filled pre-market right when we opened and we're down. You know, we went straight down right from the open. And it, and it has nothing to do with anything. But this is where the strong hands want to buy and sell again. And, and so right. they did. And the sellers won out this time. The sellers won out. So a really nice setup. A couple other things I want to kind of bring in here because we've talked about you know, how vaccines and the news flow from elections to Christmas to shutdowns is really the things that are driving the news flow right now. Have you seen CVS today? I'm this seeing is, it now. I mean, this is unbelievable. This is your local drug store. I've never seen a drug, you know, like a Walgreens type stock, or, you know, Rite Aid, CVS. This is what you're talking about. This thing is trading today. Uh, I'll, I'll show you on the daily, but this thing was perfectly set up and we we did oh. not talk about it. But look how low we were in the profile here in the last few days. And now, the, you know, what I want to talk about today is this vaccine talk, right? And these, they, they were picked as one of the you know, providers for the vaccine if and when it comes. And that's all this is. So again, you had to be on board. The trade's over now. It's happened. But Maybe there's a short here again, because again, all it did is kind of puke up, puke up here higher, didn't even get to the last high of 70 that was set post COVID when everybody exactly. thought, you know, vaccines are coming, then it sold off. Now vaccines are coming again, et cetera, right? Rinse and repeat. So you're in this news flow cycle. What takes these stocks up and down is really important. And you need to be aware of it, that you're going to see volatility in names like this that you don't normally see, Bob. And, and that's important because if you think this is a sleepy little stock right now, it's not. It will go back to that, but right now it's in play. Right. Um, well, that's, uh, a, go that's ahead. a government money play, right? The government's gonna pay for the vaccine. Supposedly, again, to be, you know, whoever the government is, we don't know who that is for, right. you know, for the time being. So there's so much to be discerned here. So volatility. As a trader, this is what you want. This is what you're looking for. So look for trades and names that can have these fundamentals, these funny mentals, as we like to say, you and I, you know, the news flow on these things is what is driving uh, the boat on this. Hey, speaking of driving the boat, new highs, uh, marijuana. I want to talk about the marijuana stocks. This is a daily chart, so it's hard to see, but you can tell for a long time here, this is a daily chart. See how we based there really from September, we were dragging along the bottom on uh, Aurora. And this is the big daddy, okay? This thing has pretty much doubled over the last couple of days. Just, just on election day, you could have bought um, Aurora at fours, 450, 480, and it's trading 1215 today. Uh, and we had five states that fully legalized recreational, correct? Yeah, five new states. That gets us up to 17 overall. So we're a third of the way there. Again, you know, follow, you know, follow the directives here. But this is a long-term play. Uh, you know, I, I tend to favor uh, CGC, which we've talked about here. And I'll bring that one up also. I'm sure it's had a good day. And we've been talking about it. So I'm long the stock. Today is a day that I want to get rid of a little bit because it's a little over-exuberant for my taste. And you can see that pretty clearly here today. You know, we've, again, shot up from, from the low 18s all the way up here to 25. And, again, just looking at some of the longer-term charts here, we're, we're, we're getting to the point where we are, you know, getting, be, getting pretty stretched away from kind of the comfort zone. doesn't mean we can't go higher, but I've owned this stock uh, really since the teens, the low teens, you know, 13, 14. So you know, I think that's so important too, that, that you, you know, you don't have to get out of the whole position no, either. No, you know, and, and this is what, and, and this is key trading around a core position. So if I'm long something or short something, I want to trade around a core position that could mean at times I tend to maybe put on some puts. If I want to just, you know, get rid of some stock that way, I'll, I'll buy some puts or 
I'll sell some calls. That way it'll be pulled away from me as we hit those strikes into you know, events like this, right? So those are good times to sell out of the money calls because you're going to get a premium and you don't care because you already own the stock. And so take it away from me, you know, right, exactly. get off my table. If it continues to go higher, that's fine. I'm still along the stock, but you know, by selling calls, I can make some premium while I, mean, I happen to be holding on and covering myself. An so, old floor adage uh, was sell half of it and hope it's and hope and pray it's the stupidest thing you've ever done. Hey, Bob, I want to talk one more thing on the marijuana thing before we go away. Just I use FinViz as a tool to kind of screen volume and, and, and plays that are in play for me, momentum. Right. Just look at these top two names on my list today. ACB, which we just talked about, has traded 347 million shares already. And then SNDL is a penny stock. Okay, and we'll show that one. Has traded also in the marijuana space. They're growers of marijuana. This thing is, has traded 545 million shares today, Bob. Just those two stocks will trade over a billion shares. Wow. Okay, so we're talking marijuana. We're talking ACB right here that we talked about already. And again, you see that volume, and that volume is huge. I mean, it's, it's you know, normally decent. ACB trades, on average, 10 million shares a day, which is a great amount of shares. Today, 350 million, 35X normal. That's not going to stay, folks. And that also is the reason why I want to sell into this strength, because you're not going to have that volume tomorrow that you have today. It's just not going to be there. Yeah, for sure. And then the people that bought it with weak, uh, weak, capital backing are going to be sensitive to any pullback and well and you and you see it on the short-term charts already i'm sure we peaked already today and yeah you know 12 15 and and it was the high and we're back into you know kind of the congregation area here of 1080 but there's another lower level behind us down here at 850 these are just today this is just looking at today i mean think about that 1080 to, to 850 that's kind of your normal range today, but I would like to pick up the stock again. I would be buying again if it got back down, say 10, you know, eight to $10. So if you can give me a pullback into there, I'll sell some up here when it opens at those high numbers. And then I start buying it back as it comes back. That's the way that I like to trade momentum, take some off, buy it as it dips. It's just, it's no different when you're selling shorts, when they bounce, you put them back on. Like we talked right. about with Peloton, right? Couple of, what is what is the uh, the graphic you have on the wall in your office? Oh, the uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it's the typical. Everybody's seen it, you know, where the the pat the the curve goes up, and that's when the masses are buying. Greed buys, right? And then as it gets to the bottom, fear sells, and that's retail. Don't be those people. Don't right. buy the top, sell the bottom. That is the tendency because you're already late to the party when that news hits. Like. It's dumb to chase it now. It's right. all out there. Not, so whether it's going up on good news or going down, those are not the times to puke. Those are the times to probably do the right thing, and it, which is the opposite thing of most retail. And the end right. of that equation, if you keep doing that, as you said, greed, buy up here, sell down here, get you to, you know, repeat until broke. <laughs> right. Is the old adage. Greed, buy is the fear of missing out, right? The the FOMO, yeah. the, the worst trading habit you could ever have. And then um, the, the fear is the sell, right? And rinse and repeat until you're out of money and you're flipping burgers. Uh, and you're, at, and at, you're uh, scratching your chin going, what did I do, right? What, what do? just happened? All right, one uh, more, uh, WD-40. I know we talked about this one uh, because all you yeah. fundamental people that say WD-40, I mean, how could it be? We're, there it is. Yep. So I'm going to bring up the chart here, a daily chart. But WD40 is another name, Bob, and we talked about this pre-show. All-time highs. Unbelievable to me. Again, if you're a fundamental trader, if you're a fundamental trader, you're short for sure. You're getting your butt, you know what, lit up, handed to you. But look at this thing. Um, you know, look at the long-term chart. I was, we were talking about this again, pre pre-market. This thing has just been marching down the line here. You can't, I mean, what stock so is it, Does it cure cancer now or what? Like what well, happened? I think they're using it. Yeah, I think they're using WD-40 now to spray on your hands at the gymnastics academies, I guess. It's working, you know, to, to really keep- <laughs> You know what WD-40 stands for? <laughs> I do not. It stands for water displacement 
and it was the 40th concoction of the recipe that uh, that that hit the mark from the the total geek scientist uh, that put it together. Water okay. displacement. I got a little story about WD-40. Let's hear. It. I was in I was in high school, and everybody has that high school friend that's father uh, drank a little bit too much, right? And so uh, we're at his house, and and we're going to go uptown to go goof off, whatever. And we get in the car, and he's trying to start his car. It's in December, January, whatever, and. Uh, the car won't start. It says, wah, 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 wah. Just turn it on, turn over. His father comes out and says, you know, what the hell are you guys doing? And he's like, dad, my car won't start. And he goes into the garage. He comes out with a can of WD-40. He says, pop the hood. We pop the hood. <laughs> he just starts pelting right. the inside of the engine with the WD-40. <laughs> and he goes, all right, try it now. Boom. Come on. Swear to God, because it's water displacement. So there's there was moisture in you know this was in the in the in the seventies. Yeah. There there was water in the either in the, the distributor cap or in the in the um, spark plug lines and water displacement. It it evaporates the water from the system. Car fired right up. Well, what? what? Well, Bob, I don't know. I don't know whether it's your story or my trading view chart now has uh, olfactory, uh, sensory things going on, but I can smell WD-40 right now. <laughs> I mean, can't, can't we all smell it? I'm telling you, like uh, WD-40, a hammer, and duct tape, and I'm pretty sure you can get to the moon. I got a couple more things I want to chat about. Uh, right jobs on. today. Jobs today. Uh, the market's muted. I mean, let's, you know, let's, let's give the market – it's due. It's sold off a little bit overnight. The spoos pulled back to, uh, I want to say, 60s uh, quietly into the jobs numbers. And then the positive jobs numbers came out, Bobby. And, and uh, you know, that was it for the lows. Like, we're, we're right back up. So, but no new prices today, except for new lows. So, we yeah, we dipped down here. Pre-market actually uh, traded 56 right around 2 a.m., and then we tested it into the jobs, and then we took off. Went to the top of the range again, right? We traded straight up here on the, off the open, off, off of the, the next news item after the jobs was Biden camp says they've won. A couple other you know, media outlets says that he won, but yet the electorals have yet to vote. So nobody's won, folks. Nothing's changed, right? Let's, let's, and there's going to be recounts for sure. I mean, come on. This is not going to be over this weekend, hate to tell you. So you can get all excited. And the more... The more times we have these, you know, um, false positives, f false negatives, it's just noise. So don't don't get sucked into it. Don't watch it. Turn it off by all means. Live your life because you have no effect at this point. Yeah. So stop uh, it. Stop. Stop. Words. Stop. Preach, live, Matt. Preach. Live. Live. live your you know life. what? And, and you know, and, and for me. Uh, when I saw the Mighty Networks, right, uh, which MarketVitals.io is built on, a Mighty Network, uh, where it's basically a Facebook-type environment, except we don't have an algo, right? We're not going to sell advertising. There, there's nobody between you and, and the community members at MarketVitals.io. We're building a community of traders based on honesty and integrity. My word is my bond. The things that uh, I lived for decades on a Chicago Mercantile Exchange floor. Um, so yeah, because there's so much, as soon as you start engaging in any of these platforms uh, that are driven by advertising dollars, you're siloing, man. That's all there is to it. Yeah. And I know, I know firsthand uh, about siloing. Uh, and I, I watched the documentary, documentary, The Social Dilemma. And you know, the most powerful part of that documentary is everybody that put these things together won't let their children anywhere near him. So another, uh, another reason. Yeah. All right, let me, uh, let me just jump in. I just want to cover one thing here, Matt. Yeah. Um, and I think it's so critical right now. A little shout out to the guys at Beeksy and the Beeksy Exchange. Let's take the rocket off because, whoa, Bitcoin absolutely uh, on fire. But for me, there's the WD-40 chart. The most important part um, about being involved in crypto is understanding uh, the potential, the, the greater potential for long-term 
um, growth in your asset base is that if you're gonna just hold a Bitcoin, you're gonna, you'll do whatever Bitcoin does, but paying attention to the pairs is very important. And for the past several weeks now, Bitcoin has just demolished the field uh, of, of highly liquid tradable crypto assets. Let me put it that way. Uh, but this is the first week now, and obviously cryptos never sleep. They, I'm gonna trade Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but for me, if this holds up, that's a, not a great candle in the Ether Bitcoin in that cross. A couple of weeks now, straight into lower momentum. Believe me, though, if they if they close this thing Sunday night back down towards the lows, it, it looks to me like uh, a, a continued Bitcoin dominance. Now, a bunch of these coins doing much better today, as you see on those percentages, higher against Bitcoin. But overall, longer term, they, 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 they've all got smeared. And all, if you look, if we go just through these top uh, five against Bitcoin, all in lower momentum on the weekly. Uh, you know, I saw tons of stuff about Bitcoin cash and how great it was going to do against Bitcoin. Not. Right. Um, and, and so for me, the story in the space or in the sector is still mind the mo. And uh, as long as Bitcoin stays dominant like that, why would you want to be in anything else? Yeah. I mean, again, it's like the S&P or, or, you know, that little uh, penny marijuana stock, which one do you want to ride? If you got right. And, and, you know, the, the analysis, the thought process of the analysis goes back to sectoring and w w who's going to be the strongest in the sector. Um, and, and why wouldn't you want to own the best company in the sector rather than, you know, the worst one? I mean, it's, it's a pretty easy thought process when you, when you think about it. Right. People overthink that stuff, you know, and they over um, sectorize and, and, you know, they, they, they get too much spreading of their wealth, right? Half a dozen stocks is probably all you need in your long-term portfolio uh, with some macro views like that. So I couldn't agree more with you. All right, Matt, we got the weekend. Uh, Hold on one second. I, gotta, I wanna talk a couple more things with you. I wanna right talk, on, yeah. I wanna talk real estate, okay? We haven't talked about this in a while, but this is the Dow Jones uh, all REIT if you will. So it's an index, doesn't trade again. And it, it's REIT. And you can look at it. What I wanted to show here is we had a huge sell-off from pre-COVID. 2379 is where this index was, right? Commercial um, real estate was totally humming, humming along. And this has obviously come to a halt with COVID, got cut in half all the way down to 1340, quickly recovered. But I threw some fib lines on here just to show you how, how much of a difficult time it's having at the golden ratio. If you don't know this, Bob, the golden ratio is not 50%, but it's 61.8. This is probably the most magical number in the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, there's a number of hedge funds, including Stevie Cohen, that is based upon uh, Fibonacci and 61.8 being the key number. It's the go, no-go line. That's hence the golden ratio. Well, guess what? We have been doinking around the golden ratio and the 50% retrace now really since this bounced in June. So again, you're looking at five, six months of no decision being made. Markets are unsure of what's going on in overall commercial real estate. Driving around Ben, Bob, you see this all the time. Every building, We're, had no, we had no space in this town at the end of last year. Fast forward a year later, all these commercial reps can't get anybody to either one, stay in their rent, they're dropping it because they're working from home, their businesses have gone out of business, whether they're you know in the service, food, et cetera. So commercial real estate's gonna continue to have, I believe, pressure. And alongside of this, I wanna talk a little bit about what Lumber did today. And Lumber, uh, let me start with the broad, uh, Lumber today had a huge, huge sell-off. Uh, so I want to show this. It went from 560 all the way down to 540, folks. And that happened in one, basically on the open, all right? So they just flushed the market. They killed it. And that was after a big run from, you know, the, the, the 490 level up here to 560, also very fast since the election. So you had this election rally because Biden, you know, the, the assumption is, oh, Biden will get rid of the vaccine, we'll take care of it, and we'll be back to the offices. Not so fast, right? And then really where I, I want you to look at here, Bob, is the weekly. 
and we, we weren't doing the show then, but when lumber <laughs> traded up to 951 a board foot, this was insane. This was June. Yeah. The, or rather, this was September. This was the first of September, and we were following this. This, this thing was a freaking – it was already insane coming into COVID. We sell off, and now look at it. I mean, we went from 250 a board foot to 950. Even lumber went up 4X almost. It's insane. So, but I have also put a fib here, right? 61.8, right about where we are. 520, we're trading 547, the go, no go. We're right in here, guys. So lumber, you got to watch this. I think this is a leading indicator for real estate always. And this is broken now. Uh, granted, 950 was insane. 500 is still insane. We're talking lumber, people. The, the you know, sticks, and, sticks are built for houses, but they're not the best houses, right? Yeah, you know, and and for sure there there was uh, you, we saw it here in Bend, right? How much building is going on, the price points that they're getting, seemingly. And you were here; I was not here in uh, 07, 08. Um, and I've talked to a lot of people though that that talk about how Bend is a very good barometer of the overall market. But it's um, lagging always, yeah. Yeah, but but it does boom and bust uh, time, yeah. on a regular basis with with the the overall situation and price points are getting are blowing away the 0708 price points right pre -crash. yeah the median the median home price here in bend now is up to 560 that's your median bob you can't i mean, I mean if you if, if you're a working stiff you can't you can there's nothing there there's no dirt you can buy for 150,000 in this town let alone yeah. an actual you know maybe a shopping cart you could buy a shopping cart for 150,000 <laughs> Right. Well, those are moving. Uh, those are moving. By the way, I see a lot of those out off the Revere corridor from Safeway. They come right from Third and Revere, and they bring their carts right over to the Revere corridor, and they sh they stock up with whatever they can find, you know. And then they the the the, the homeless camp shelters are unbelievable in this town. And I've heard uh, my brother in Austin, and me and you have both been to San Francisco and in Portland. Um, for sure, that's a that's a bigger social issue than most anything that's being talked about. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Matt, uh, we're we're to the weekend. You made it again, another week. Another week, another election right. week, a big week. Hopefully, and, and again, hey, let's recap. Volatility this week went down, like we said, right? Got yeah. very quiet. Uh, next week is uh, let's see, we've got two full weeks now until Turkey Week. Right so on. next week should be a decent trading week. Again, I think you always have to evaluate the calendar based on where we are and what's uh, moving. This is something we could talk about also. This is kind of, the, we're getting kind of into that silly se season, I like to say. Once we get to Thanksgiving, basically traders, they call it a year. They've hit it or they haven't. They just try to square their books out best they can. They, they take losses, they book gains, whatever it is they need to do. But this becomes kind of a silly season. You'll see, you'll see upward pressure on stocks that have been up all year because the, the shorts run for cover, you get this false buying. You have the same thing on the downside. Any stocks that were being pressured should continue to be pressured as we go into the year end. So think about this. If you're looking to take some losers, do it before it gets worse. And if you're looking to you know, book some gains, let them ride until the end because these things tend to finish the year strongly either higher or lower. I just wanted to- Right on. Yep. All right, and I got uh, my eye on Monday, uh, for the opening of the CME uh, pork cutout contract. Um, one thing about trading is like, uh, it's like the ultimate sports book, right? There's almost an infinite number of uh, things that you can play. Uh, and we get a new one on Monday, the pork cutout contract. And I will be uh, putting together content. We'll, we will add these uh, things as, as time evolves, I can't put the sheet out yet because there's not proper price discovery in order to do it. But we'll be adding the poor cutout to the uh, Market Vital sheet uh, and the crosses, the calendar crosses, and also the crosses against that lean hog contract. I uh, spent my career in Chicago in multiple pits, but I ended it in the hog complex and uh, a dangerous but great trade. So uh, if, any of you wanna, to... if any of you want to to send Bob a Razorbacks hog hat, please feel free <laughs> yeah, to send him one. I will, you know, I, I need my pig's fly hat for this segment. No, but I like the Razorback red pig hat. 
Uh, yeah, it is you know, an it is a it's, it's I a miss beautiful. That. I miss I miss Arkansas being good in hoops and and they were never really that good in football, but they were always like the fourth fifth C in the SEC. But yeah. I love the red, you know, Razorback hats. Love them. And who was the who was the longtime coach for Arkansas the basketball? Guy? I can't remember his name, but I can picture him. He was he was dark and sweaty. <laughs> All the time. That guy was a sweater, man. He sweat through his suits. They, it might have been because they were, you know, heavy polyester in the 70s, too. But Right on. All right, Matt, thank you so much. Uh, listen, uh, to you out there watching in the, uh, in the Matrix, join us at marketvitals.io. All right, uh, become part of the community. Uh, leave uh, your life of Facebook and Facebook groups behind around trading and join us, uh, and we'll continue the conversation. Thank you, Matt. See you, Bob.